One of the implications of the fact that we have, you know, during 150 years, been moving decisively in the wrong direction, and particularly then over the last 50 years, exponentially increasing the pressures to the global scale, it means that, unfortunately, we've filled up so much of the atmosphere with greenhouse gases, we have emptied so much of the oceans of overfishing, we have destroyed so much of our ecosystems that we now have scientific evidence that we need to transform ourselves back into a safe operating space on Earth within one generation. In fact, it's even, even more challenging. We need to bend the curves of negative trends within the next one, two, three years. We have to bend the curve of greenhouse gas emissions no later than 2020 in two years' time. And in order to do that and then bend the curves and come to full sustainability by 2050, which is only 30 years away. So we have one generation to accomplish and clean up and get a desired stable future for humanity. And that is why I'm absolutely convinced, and this is often um, seen as, as one of uh, the challenging insights, which is that one generation is such a short time and bending the curves in a few years is such a short time that my conclusion is that we cannot wait for the next generation to take the responsibility. We cannot uh, wait for values to change. We cannot wait for uh, you know, paradigm shifts in, in ethics or values because that takes too long time. We simply have to act on all fronts at the same time, investing in new values, in new ethics, building uh, on community-based uh, stewardship, while at the same time really take the bull by the horns and work with the obsolete GDP growth dominated economic paradigm that we have with the institutions that often are inert and slow that we have with the, the regulatory frameworks and the logics on the financial markets that we have because they are here and they will not disappear and therefore we you know we have to get and bend this within the conventional realities we have. And the question is, how do you do that? Well, it's quite simple. You do it by recognizing the need for political leadership. You need political leadership from above to be able to start setting the regulatory frameworks that creates a safe operating space around the markets that are the dominant forces of incentives in the, in the conventional world of economics today. So it's it's in my mind quite naive to think we'll solve this by changing the, the economic paradigm in the world or we solve this by having completely new, uh, a whole new universal set of values because that would be beautiful, of course, but it will take us more than one generation to achieve. Instead, I think we have to do that and work pragmatically with the systems we know and that we have.